In this video, we're gonna unbox the Estes Baby Bertha. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today, you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Today we're gonna unbox the Estes Baby Bertha rocket kit. Uh, now they call it the Baby Bertha because there's actually a Big Bertha and that rocket looks like this. This is the Estes Big Bertha. This is a classic kit. It was developed in the early 1960s and the original rocket was based on a paper towel tube and that's why it kind of looks about the diameter of a paper towel tube and it's pretty much stayed the same diameter ever since. There's also a rocket called the Boosted Bertha, which looks like this, which is the big Bertha that has a booster stage. So this is a two-stage version. The Baby Bertha is going to be a smaller version of this, although it's the same diameter. And I'm also looking on the back of the rocket and I can see that it's the same tube diameter. Let's open it up and see what's inside. We're gonna look at this from the perspective of an engineer, you know, how I would design a rocket, you know, what makes it great, uh, what I would be concerned about, those kinds of things. Uh, but Estes makes a really good kit and the Baby Bertha has been around for a little while. Uh, we're just getting it here at Apogee for the first time. So when we open it up, this is the body tube. And as I said before, it's the same size tube as the Big Bertha. It's just gonna be shorter. All right, so that's the tube and it's a cardboard tube made out of craft paper. It's got a nice slick surface on it. So it takes paint really well. Um, these are the fins and um, they're, they're laser cut fins and this one popped out, which is the nice thing about them is they come out of the sheet really easy. One of the things that I wanted to check was to see if it was the same size as the Big Bertha. And it's just slightly smaller. So I don't know if you can see that here, but this fin is a little bit shorter than the Big Bertha. That's okay, it's the baby size. Uh, again, this is balsa wood. This is three, um, three 16th inch wood. It's not quite an eighth of an inch. I'm just using my calibrated eyeball for that. Uh, the balsa looks fine, nice nice balsa wood. This is the, the nose cone, and this is the same one that's used on the Big Bertha and the Boosted Bertha. Uh, blow molded, um, you know, it will fit the tube just nice. Well, that's a nice snug fit. Um, that's a little bit too snug for my tastes. Um, so a lot of time on the inside of the tube, there's a little, when they cut these, you know, sometimes when you cut something, it leaves a little burr that, you know, kind of kind of pushed in. And if you take your fingernail and you just rub around on the inside like that, sometimes that can loosen it up. Oh yeah, and that, that's, that did it. So the problem is not with the nose cone, it's, it had the burr on the tube. So I've just showed you how to fix that. Um, inside of here, what we have is the face card. This is called the face card and it's a color image of the rocket as it's completed. Um, so you can see that this rocket, um, so I got a measuring here, I can measure this. And the tube plus the nose cone is 10 inches. Um, here on the face card, it says 12 inches, 12.8 inches. So that's the fins, the, the total length is the fins all the way up to the top of the nose cone. Um, this is an easy paint job. It's just all black. It might have one white fin on the back. It's kind of hard to tell if that's, you know, um, um, a shiny part, you know, where the light's hitting it or if it's actually white. I think it's white. So I think when I build mine, it's gonna be white. Uh, inside this, you'll find the instruction sheet. And this is four pages, so it's not very, hard to build and I see this is skill level. This They call it an intermediate skill level, uh, which is what Apogee calls a skill level two. So it's not quite a beginner kit, but it's the next level up. But then there's three levels harder. 
So this is still like, you know, considered an easy kit. If you've ever built a rocket before, this will probably be no issue. So here on the front, we have this part right here. This trapezoid is the shock cord anchor. And then you also have the wrap to mark the fins. So you're gonna mark the fins first before you cut out that shock cord mount, or otherwise it's not gonna work as a wrap. Um, so there's a sequence to doing this. And yeah, and they show it, you know, this, the third step down is cutting out that um, wrap here on the front. Um, Estes uses a lot of illustrations, which is really good. It makes it easy so you don't get confused by sometimes text can be confusing, particularly if the author that wrote it um, is not kind of uh, thinking in a logistical perspective. But this is pretty good. Um, there's hardly, you know, like the parachute uh, recovery. It says prepare a recovery system right here. And it's just all pictures from there on out. Um, and then here on the back, you have your launching instructions. Um, this sheet right here is your warranty sheet. And it also includes um, dimensions of the launch site. So you know how high it's going to fly about. What I would recommend, though, is come to the Apogee website at apogeerockets.com. When you go to the Baby Bertha page, so just use the search bar at the very top, go to the Baby Bertha page, and on that page you will find a link to what we call the Launch Visualizer. And it will have the Baby Bertha in the Launch Visualizer already, so you're actually seeing a 3D scene, it's kind of like a virtual scene, and you can move that scene around anywhere in the world so you can put that rocket right where you intend to launch it. And then you can put a rocket motor in it and it will tell you how high it's gonna go and then where on your field it's gonna land. So instead of just using this chart, come to the Epigee website and make sure that the rocket is not gonna overfly your field. Um, okay, um, this right here is our decal and it's, it's white and blue. <laughs> Here on this, it's it's very hard. It's like it's a different color blue, but when you put this blue on a black rocket, it's probably going to turn it darker, which is why they have it like that. Um, these are sticker type decals, so you'll just peel them off and stick them on your rocket. Makes it real easy for kids to put them on. Um, inside of here, this bag is the parachute and the recovery system. Um, the recovery system includes a shock cord, and this is a rubber shock cord. Um, as your rocket gets old, so if your rocket's like more than a year old after you've built it, make sure you pull on this to make sure it, uh, it's not going to snap. Because this is rubber, and rubber degrades over time, so you have to watch that. It's typical. Um, you should have no problems with it. This is the engine clip. Um, this is spring steel, and this will, is what holds your engine in. This here is our parachute, and the nice thing, and I can tell it already, is that the shock cord, or the uh, suspension lines, are already pre-attached to that parachute. And it's a colorful parachute, uh, made out of low-density polyethylene. Um, and it looks to be about 12 inches in diameter. So this is a small rocket, so obviously that's pretty good, uh, 12 inches, and you know, it'll come down fast enough that it's not going to go too far, but slow enough that it doesn't break your rocket. And then finally, we have the rest of the parts. There's not a lot of parts in this kit, which makes it easy to build. We have our engine mount tube. Again, this is a cardboard tube. The difference in the cardboard is this one has a white wrap. This one is just brown. Um, this one, because it's white, if you're using a pencil to mark it, it's easier to see than the brown, but there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, this is a ring that goes on the outside, and this is what holds this engine clip down so that the engine clip can't fall off. Um, so that's your engine hook ring. This right here is going to be your engine block that's going to go on the inside at the right distance. And that keeps the engine from pushing this engine hook out and then the rocket could go inside your rocket, which you don't want. Um, this is our launch log, just a little tiny straw that glues on the outside of the rocket like that. And this is, when you put it on the launch pad, this is what guides the rocket 
for that first few feet of flight until the rocket picks up speed where the fins take over and guiding the rocket. So that way it's always going in the direction that you want. And then finally, we have uh, laser cut centering rings uh, for the engine mount to center it up into this tube. So this is the Estes Baby Bertha. You'll find it at Apogee Rockets. Our web address is apogeerockets.com. My name again is Tim Van Milligan, and thanks for watching. <music>